Step one, find your headboard. I found this for, I think it was $20. Usually I get my stuff for free, but it was for Janae, so, you know. Anyways, give it a good clean, because you have to. Then I did some moldings because it was really plain, and I wanted this to look really rustic and grungy, but I also wanted it to be fancy, so, you know, appliques. Here, I'm just giving it a quick coat of white, because I know that Janae wants her stuff to be really kind of light and airy. So that's the direction I started with. The whole thing was going to stay white, but things change. I feel like I sped this up a lot and it's just not enough still. wanted to drop it in tell you that when I'm going to do the appliques since they're uh, still a bit wet I like to paint them while they're still a little bit wet um, I'm using a smaller brush to do that because it's just a little more gentle I'm still getting a little bit of brush strokes in but by the end um, they'll kind of level out a little bit they'll still have some texture but that's just because of the medium that I use and I want it to have kind of that old antique -y feel so it works perfect for me um, if you were to do like a quick resin or something, you wouldn't get any of the texture with the exception of what you get from the paint. But um, I then take this brush, I dip it in quite a bit of paint and then kind of slop it on them because to me it's easier to put on a lot of paint and then kind of wipe it away to make sure that all the little uh, cracks and crevices are filled with paint rather than trying to go through each and every tiny little section and make sure that there's paint on it without moving any of the clay without doing any of that so it's just easier to kind of slop it on and then remove the excess paint so that's what i'm doing with that and then i do the whole rest of the headboard with my giant brush to just get it all on there so coat one i'll do coat two and then um i'll see where i stand and we'll start doing blending You'll notice I'll have the board in a few different directions. It's because when I work on my pieces, I like to have them in different angles because a lot of times you'll miss a spot and I find that I miss less spots if I flip the piece kind of on different sides. So that's just kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, so really quickly, I made a change. So instead of starting my blending process, I put two stencils on here and I'm gonna do a raised stenciling with a um, purple, like a light purple medium. It's a little too drippy, so I'm giving it time to dry to thicken up. Um, I'm doing this in case I don't like the purple on it with the blending and I can just paint over it really quickly with the white and I won't mess up any blending that I've already done. So that's why I'm choosing to do this first. If I like it, great, it can stay and I'll just carry on with my blending process. Um, if I end up hating it, it's fine. I'll paint over it in white and then it will, you know, be perfect and I can do all the distressing and glazing and everything with it so it'll stand out, but it just won't stand out as much as if it were all purple. So that's what I'm going to do now. As you can see, I didn't love the purple and I went over it with the white, which I actually really enjoy, but we end up making this so much better, like a million times better. You have to, you have to see the end of it. It's so good. Thank you. 
this here is the beginning of like a really rough blend. I feel like they always start out so crazy looking. And then the end is amazing. So if you can just hold out through the very beginning, <laughs> you might end up with something that you love. Which I totally did on this piece. But for whatever reason, I couldn't figure out how to photograph it appropriately to show its awesomeness. I did work with three colors here. So I did a dark, a mid-tone, and a light. And that just kind of helps transition everything together rather than doing two colors. And all I did was just mix the two together. You can mix them on the piece and that's fine, but I just find it easier having three different pots. And that's just water. I always use water to blend. It makes things a million times easier, especially when you're dealing with chalk paint because that stuff dries quick. And baby just woke up from a nap, so had to handle that. Okay, here's the blend so far. This is the second round. And then it's gonna get some other things to kind of help it mesh together. There's some discoloration in it, but that's just because some of the paint's drying and some of it is dry. So there's more variation. It'll look a lot more um, blended once everything is dried. I'm going to apologize for the splotchy light right now. It's just the time of day it is, but we are starting our um, metallic coat kind of to give it the pearl color. This is uh, a seashell toned metallic and as you can see this whole thing is like perfectly modeled and lovely so we're going to just add this other layer to kind of meld everything together again and that's all that we're doing now from now on is just adding layers um, to kind of blend it all together. So here we go. I was finding with the foam brush that as I was going over the appliques, it was creating tiny bubbles. So that got real annoying, but I've got a fix coming up. So don't use a foam brush with this or do if you enjoy bubbles.
I love how much you can see the stencil pop as soon as you put the metallic over it. Okay, so first coat of the metallic is dry. I'm going to do a quick buff with my sanding block. Um, not sanding, just knocking down any high points. And um, I took my metallic. The first round I did with a sponge brush. This one I'm going to do with a uh, synthetic bristle brush and I watered it down a lot. Because as you can see, there's some streaks and everything. I knew I was going to do two coats anyways, but I want to make sure that this gets all up in here and the bristles will help me get inside all the appliques and everything, whereas the sponge made it a little more difficult. So we're going to go with a super, super thin layer with a synthetic brush and see how that does. So let me get to buffing. Okay, quick update. This works way better when it's thinned out and with the synthetic brush. So I think when I go to do the kids bed, I'm gonna do the same thing because this is way better. Okay, here I mixed up a gold and silver gilding wax to make kind of a pewtery color, and that's what I'm putting on all of these guys here. I don't know why I don't use gloves more often for this part. I feel like every time I'm finished, I touch the piece and get gilding wax where it's not supposed to be. So take a, my advice and just wear gloves when you do gilding wax and then take them off before you touch your piece. Okay, I've laid this down on the floor so that I can put the glaze on. I'm going to put it on with just a cheapy chip brush and then I've got this uh, rag right over here that I will wipe it back with. Um, it's on its back now so that I can get everything to kind of sit in all the crevices instead of rolling down with it upright. So that's the plan. I always work in small sections when I'm doing glazing, so that's also a, a good idea. Small sections, because it will start drying and sticking and you don't want that. This just adds like such a nice grungy vibe to it. Okay, I may or may not have done some stuff off camera cause I just got carried away and then I forgot to turn the camera back on. So I will just walk you through it. Each um, part of the raised stencil I went through with a little brush. I will show you. Okay, so I went through with little detail brushes and I painted on gilding wax. So on all the flowers, I did rose gold. On um, like the stamen and any other pieces that I felt would look good, gold, I did those in gold. And then on all of the like the larger leaves and stuff, I did the like pewter color that I had mixed up. Um, so yeah, so this whole thing is done in three different metallic gilding waxes. 
So this is really hard to see unless the light's hitting it perfectly. It's very subtle, but very awesome. Um, I've been trying to get pictures and get the right angle and lighting so that you can actually appreciate what amazingness that this is. So once I figure that out, I'll put those in at the end of the video. But this yeah. is essentially the end. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. I am yeah. so in love with it. I made it for Janae. And then I told her that I could probably get a reasonable amount of funds for it. So maybe I'll sell it and make her another one. I don't know. Um, I'll let her see it first and decide. Because she might want something a little different. This was just kind of like a surprise fun thing to do. So yeah, this is it. Here, we can move it out some more too. Um, and then this fade is also much more subtle in person. Just on camera, it looks it looks less subtle. It looks very strong through here. And it's not. It's much more fadey. Um, yeah, so it's lovely. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. All that jazz. And I will see you guys next time. Here's the before again. And the pictures, again, I could not get them to do justice to this piece. The line just looks so strong in the blend and it wasn't. But update, I did sell it for 200 which I was pleased with considering it was such a small headboard.